What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades. But Baz, that's not a knife. Um, yeah, no blade there Baz. What are you talking about today? Well guys, uh, I got a recent request from a viewer. Uh, and a lot of you guys know that I play guitar. And I, I don't put a lot of my guitar stuff up because this channel is dedicated to you know, knives and firearms and EDC and, and whatnot. But um, I did get a request to go through my guitars, sort of showcase my guitars, what I'm uh, playing. And uh, you know what? I say playing, quote unquote playing, because I don't hardly have the time to play anymore. I've played guitar since... 1983 i started when i was 13 years old and just played for years and years and years and years and years and i no longer perform but i am still a fair, fairly serious hobbyist if in no other way than i spend a lot of money on the crap so we're going to go through my collection real quick here and i'm not going to go into a lot of details because unless you are a guitar player a lot of these details are just going to go right over your head uh, much like talking about knives or firearms to somebody that has no idea what you're talking to. Uh, if you get too detailed, it just goes right over their heads. So, we're going to start here. This is my beater guitar. And this is just like in the knife world, guys. You've got a beater knife that you carry and you beat on. You use for the heavy-duty, dirty stuff. You keep your nicer things uh, for Saturday, going out on the town carry or whatever. Uh, and this guitar is a lot like this. This is a Jackson guitar. You can see the headstock there. Jackson. Jackson is a very well-known uh, manufacturer of guitars, mostly associated with rock and metal music. Um, going back as good lord to the 80s, guys, Jacksons were everywhere. If it wasn't... Uh, <laughs> Guys, if there was anybody that was anybody in the 80s, they probably had a Jackson guitar go through their hand unless they were playing like Ibanez guitars. But this is my beater guitar. This is a Jackson JS series. It's a very low-end guitar. I think these were about $300 brand new. Very simple uh, dual humbugger pickups. A fixed bridge here uh, 24 fret neck it is a bolt on neck we're going to flip this over you can see the bolt on joint there black back it's got a gloss finish and a, a satin finish on the neck which i have played until it's shiny and i need to scuff back down to get the satin back um this one has got a i don't know if you can tell here but it does have a flame maple top on it uh, but being a, you know, a sort of a low end guitar, that flame maple doesn't really pop out. But I love this guitar. I don't even keep this in a case. I keep this hanging on a wall hanger. And uh, it hangs right next to my amplifier. And it's the first thing that I can grab. I keep a strap on it with my wireless system on it. All I've got to do is grab it, hit a couple of power switches on my amp and my pedal board. And I'm ready to roll with that thing. So that's the very first thing we got here. And guys, I don't have a tripod to put my camera on to use. And I'm using the bed as the background here. So you'll have to forgive the shakiness. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is my acoustic guitar. And being a metalhead, uh, I don't use a lot of acoustic. Uh, but I do love acoustic guitar. And uh, it works very well for heavy music to create dynamics. And I know you've heard that many, many bands use acoustic guitars. They do intros to their songs in acoustic before the heavy guitar comes in. And it just makes that, you know, you get a beautiful acoustic piece to start it. And then you get the heavy guitar. And it makes that heavy guitar seem even heavier. And this is a Fender Acoustic. It's not an expensive guitar, but I love this guitar. Uh, this is actually a Signature Series guitar from Fender. And you can see right here, it is the Tim Armstrong Signature model. It's called the Hellcat. And you can see the inlays on the fretboard. They're actually cats and skulls. And Tim Armstrong is the guitarist for The Offspring. Uh, I know you've heard The Offspring. They're a pop-punk band. Very popular. A lot of hit songs. 
and this is a very basic acoustic guitar uh, it's an all mahogany you can see the mahogany top on it here uh, it's mahogany sides mahogany back uh, a beautiful beautiful guitar guys with a maple neck on it here uh, just sort of really traditional fender type of acoustic build and like I say not an expensive guitar uh, but a really good sounding guitar for what it is uh, this guitar is like the uh, best tech G10 series of the acoustic guitar world uh, you get more out of it than what you are putting into it uh, money-wise I love love this guitar and I'm not gonna play any in this video because later on I'm gonna do another video with the rest of my rig with my amplifier and, and effects and all of that and I will do some playing then uh, we're just gonna sort of showcase the actual instruments this time and get that out of the way so we don't do a super duper long video let's see if I can finagle this I'm gonna have to set you guys down all right the next guitar is an ibanez now i have played ibanez guitars since the 80s and uh, i never was successful uh in my musical career and in, in, in fact i was pretty much a flop so i never was uh endorsed by anybody but in the 80s if i would have wanted to have been endorsed by anybody it would have been ibanez guitars um, all of my guitar heroes, for the most part, were playing Ibanez uh, in the 80s as far as technical players. And this is a sort of a, a different type of Ibanez guitar because you associate them with solid body electrics. But what we have here is a semi-hollow. All right. Take a look at this, guys. I love this guitar. I've had this guitar for about 15 years. It's a discontinued model. Uh, I wish they still made these. All you can do is find them on a the secondary market. And it was a niche model to begin with, so there wasn't a lot of them out there. Uh, they're nearly impossible to find. But it is a single cutaway, semi-hollow uh, electric guitar, uh, a lot like the Gibson ES-335, which is a double cutaway, but it's the same type of build. And a semi-hollow guitar, what that means is... Uh, you can see the F hole right here. The sides of the body are completely hollow. You can see down in the body there. And the sides of the body are completely hollow. And then through the center, there is a block of wood that runs with the neck. Uh, so what that does is semi-hollow guitars resonate a lot. And when you start adding gain or distortion, uh, a lot of volume in their environment they start what they call feedback and it can be uncontrollable so guitar uh, manufacturers started making semi hollows with the solid block in the center it gives you sort of an airy um, resonant sound of the semi hollow but it helps you control the feedback like a solid body and this guitar is freaking fabulous guys um, let's go down here and take a look at this hardware. I have worn all the finish off of the hardware on this, guys. It, it looks like it's a hundred years old. And, uh, I just love, love this guitar. It is 100% flame maple. You can see the top is flame maple. The sides of the guitar is flame maple. The back of the guitar is flame maple, guys. It's just a beautiful, beautiful instrument. And it, it's just a fabulous playing instrument also. Um, great, great rock and roll tones. And I play a lot of heavy metal on this guitar. It blows people's minds. Uh, the metal that I play is like 80s era thrash metal. And I pull this guitar out and start thrashing away on it. And people are like, uh, okay, what's going on here? And, uh, yeah, I just love, love, love this guitar, guys. It's a great modern take on vintage and a semi hall body build. All right. So, I'm going to set you guys down one more time. Mm. 
And we're going to pull out the last guitar here. Now, I used to have a collection that was 12 or 15 guitars, and I pared that down. There was just too much in life to spend money on, and I couldn't spend the money on guitars. I wasn't performing anymore. Uh, I, you know, I'm just playing at home by myself in my spare time, so I just couldn't spend tens of thousands of dollars on instruments. So... This is my primary guitar. This is my primary solid body guitar, and it is an awesome guitar. But I want to start out with this case. I typically, I don't care about cases. If you notice the other guitars, they were in just plain black hard shell cases. And, uh, you know, that's good enough. I don't put stickers on them. I don't stencil my name on them because I don't tour. And... Um, that's fine but this guitar just spoke to me and it needed something special so i went to a company called guitar fetish and they do a bunch of aftermarket cases and i got a case for this thing and it's in a, a brown tweed and uh, it's got sort of leatherette stitched ends on it here and like a leatherette sort of uh, handle the hardware on it is antique bronze of course, that is just a, a code, and they're not actually bronze, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, but just like in our knife world, the hardware does count on stuff, and even the packaging counts. Uh, I'd rather spend $100 on a knife that comes with great packaging than $100 on a knife that comes in a plain white cardboard box. All right, guys, so here we go on this one. This is my primary, and this is a Schecter guitar. And it is also a signature series, and it is a signature series of a guy named Keith Marrow. Uh, Keith is a YouTube sensation, much like myself, uh, except he has millions of followers, where I have about three or four followers. And Keith, uh, he got so popular. He's one of those success stories from YouTube. A, such a prolific writer and player and a, a fantastic musician and a nice guy that he started getting picked up by different manufacturers to endorse their products or to help in developing their products. And he was picked up by Schecter Guitars as an endorsing artist and developed his, this is the second, this is the Mark II series of his guitars and um, this guitar is one of those instruments that gives you more than you pay for. Now, it is an import instrument, uh, but this is like, you're talking like uh, Riate knives. Yeah, they're made in China, but they are awesome. And that's what you're looking at in this guitar. Uh, it is a flame maple top. I hope that's coming across well, guys, in a natural finish. Uh, again, a fixed bridge guitar, dual humbuckers. It's got an ebony fretboard. The fret wire on it is actually stainless steel on this model, and it is much, much harder than the more commonly used nickel uh, silver uh, fret material used traditionally on guitars. It's got a flame maple headstock to match. It's got black hardware on it. And the back of this guitar is just as beautiful as the front, guys. And this is a neck-through instrument. Uh, as you can see, the neck is one piece. It goes all the way through the body, and then the body wings are glued on for your solid body. And the neck on this is a uh, five-piece laminate of rock maple and wingate and uh, it is beautiful the body is swamp ash and uh, I mean it's just it's just an awesome awesome looking guitar and check out the interior of that case that blonde tufted interior guys I mean it looks really really good with this guitar uh, this is the case this guitar should have come in from the factory instead of just a plain old black case but uh, I really, really do like this instrument. It is a super hot rod guitar. Um, for what you pay for it, it's one of those that bats well above everybody else's average. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. You know, uh, I've got my beater guitar that I use all the time. And then I've got, you know, a great acoustic guitar. 
uh, that Fender acoustic guitar. I've got a, uh, a fantastic Ibanez semi-hollow guitar. And then I've got what is, in my opinion, one of the best deals on the guitar market in this Schecter Keith Marrow solid body. The next video that I do for my musical stuff, I'm going to take you into my practice room. And we are going to take a look at my amplifier and my effects. And again, we're not going to get too detailed on this. And, uh, I'll play just a, you know, a couple of licks maybe for you. And uh, so you can hear that stuff. And uh, as always, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you. And we will talk to you again.